Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. In a contact sport like hockey, injuries are an unfortunate yet inescapable factor of the game. Sure, a number of rule changes have been implemented over the years in order to try and improve player safety, and a shift in the game's philosophy has brought an end to the days of line brawls, hip checks, and intentional headshots, but the physical and competitive nature of the sport means that spilling some blood or even breaking a bone is bound to happen from time to time. When you think of highly touted, injury-prone players that have suited up in the NHL over the last decade, one name that might come to mind is Cody Hodgson. As a first-round draft pick back in 2008, it seemed as if Hodgson was destined to produce a long and successful career in the best league in the world. Yet only eight years after his selection, he was forced to hang up his skates and retire from the sport. Given his struggles with the injury bug throughout his career, and how quietly he disappeared from the NHL, many fans have wondered what really happened to Hodgson, and why he had fallen off the hockey map by his late 20s. Did his ailments finally become too much to handle? Had he fallen out of love with the game? Or was he simply unable to live up to the hype that comes with being a first round draft pick? Well, in today's video, let's delve deeper into his roller coaster ride in the league and take a closer look at how it all went down as we investigate the unfortunate career of Cody Hodgson. Let us begin on June 20th, 2008, when Canadian forward Cody Hodgson was selected 10th overall at the NHL entry draft by the Vancouver Canucks. Not only had he dominated his competition by notching 85 points in just 63 games with the OHL's Brampton Battalion, Hodgson was drafted so high at the event, thanks to his hockey sense and his strong leadership qualities, catching the eye of Canucks general manager Mike Gillis. After his selection, Hodgson would quickly join the Canucks for their pre-season training camp, and though he would sign his three-year entry-level contract on October 5th, 2008, he was unable to earn a place on Vancouver's roster for the upcoming 08-09 NHL season, instead being reassigned to the OHL the very next day, where he would rejoin Brampton for the entire year. To say that Hodgson's return to the major junior circuit was a success would be an absolute understatement. Not only would he be named captain of the battalion roster upon his return, the 19-year-old would pick up right where he left off, and somehow found a way to rack up even more points in less games played than the year prior. By the end of the season, the Canadian forward had potted 43 goals and 92 points in just 53 regular season games, before adding a further 31 points in just 21 playoff games too. As you might expect, these impressive numbers helped Hodgson earn his fair share of awards, including CHL Player of the Year, the OHL's Most Outstanding and Most Sportsmanlike Player, as well as a place on the OHL's first All-Star team. If that wasn't impressive enough though, the first round pick would also make his pro hockey debut during the 2009 AHL playoffs, where he scored 6 points in 11 games with Vancouver's minor league affiliate the Manitoba Moose. So not only had he found another gear to his game in the major juniors, Hodgson had also made an immediate impact in the minor leagues too. He sure looked like the real deal, eh folks? Unfortunately, the rising star would be dealt a huge setback soon after the season was over. While he was training in the off-season, Hodgson suffered what appeared to be a bulging disc in his back and was unable to train normally for two months over the summer. Once the 2009 preseason arrived and Vancouver's training camp got underway, both the Canucks team doctors and a back specialist in Toronto cleared Hodgson to play on September 11th, so he took to the ice and practiced with the team in the hopes of earning a place on the roster and finally getting the opportunity to make his NHL debut. Though many people were expecting him to force his way onto the team and make the jump to the bigs, the Canadian forward struggled during preseason and was unable to crack the roster, as he was one of the last players cut from camp on September 29th and was once again sent back down to Brampton for the season. Despite being cleared to play by multiple medical professionals, Hodgson still felt that something wasn't quite right in his body. This concern prompted him to seek a third medical opinion from doctors in Cleveland, Ohio, which led to Canucks head coach Elaine Vigneault publicly speculating whether Hodgson was trying to make excuses as to why he didn't make the cut at camp, and whether he was trying to shift the blame away from himself and push it towards an injury that he had supposedly already healed from instead. These thoughts were seriously considered by fans and media alike, 
until test results from the Cleveland-based clinic revealed that Hodgson's injury had been misdiagnosed from the start. He didn't have a bulging disc in his back, he had a muscle strain and nerve damage in his leg. If that wasn't bad enough, the treatment he was receiving for a bulging disc was actually aggravating his real injuries even further. So not only had he been rehabbing the complete wrong injury, he had been making his actual injuries even worse. Well, no wonder he didn't play well in preseason then. I think you owe someone an apology there, Vigno. After adjusting his treatment and finally getting his body on the right track again, Hodgson would spend most of the 09-10 season on the injured reserve list, but would return to the battalion lineup in early February 2010. From there, the Canadian forward hoped to finish the season strong and get another shot to crack the Canucks roster later on in the year. Though he would once again light up the OHL by potting 20 points in 13 regular season games and 10 points in 11 playoff games, injuries found their way to the forefront once again. Hodgson had broken a toe in his right foot before the season was over and was believed to have re-injured his back when he collided headfirst into the boards during the playoffs. Though he was looking to rejoin the Manitoba Moose once the OHL season was up, these injuries prompted the Canucks to rule Hodgson unfit to play, where an MRI scan later revealed that they had indeed made a mistake in their initial diagnosis of his ailments. In order to rectify his injury problems and get back into game shape as quickly and efficiently as possible, with the Canucks' consent, Hodgson spent the offseason training with former NHLer Gary Roberts, who also overcame a serious back injury during his career. Once the 10-11 NHL season came around, a much healthier Hodgson was hoping that third time was the charm as he once again looked to earn a spot on the Canucks' opening night roster. Despite putting up a valiant effort, the former first round pick wasn't ready just yet, so he was sent down to the AHL in order to start the year with Manitoba's roster instead. Several months went by and Hodgson was still plying his trade with the Moose. He was able to get back into the lineup after breaking his orbital bone in December of 2010 and continued to refine his game down in the minors. That is, until January 31st, 2011, when Hodgson received the greatest news of his career. He had been called up to the Vancouver Canucks roster and would be making his NHL debut. Having finally made it to the bigs, Hodgson wouldn't take long to add several career firsts to his resume, as he scored his first NHL goal in just his second regular season game and added his first assist in his third game. However, Vancouver's management made it very clear that this call-up was a means of introducing Hodgson to the NHL so he could experience what it's like to play against the best players in the world on a nightly basis and see just how well he needed to play if he wanted to stay up there long term. The front office emphasised how they preferred at that point in time Hodgson play first line minutes and a bigger role for the AHL farm team instead of getting limited fourth line action in the bigs, a theory which was proven correct as Hodgson was used sparingly on the Canucks roster during his entire first stint with the team. In fact, the former first round pick ended up spending the rest of the season bouncing between the bigs and the minors, leading Hodgson to finish the year with 30 points in 52 AHL games, along with 2 points in 8 NHL games. That said, Hodgson did return to the Canucks roster for the 2011 playoffs and helped the team make it all the way to the Stanley Cup finals thanks to scoring a single point in 12 games, but we all know how that turned out, don't we folks? However, Hodgson's career in the NHL was only just getting started. The 11-12 NHL season saw Hodgson finally crack the Canucks roster out of training camp as he suited up with the team on their opening night roster. Serving as the third-line centre for most of the year, the Canadian forward produced a strong rookie season by notching 16 goals and 33 points in the first 63 games of the year. He even earned a place at the NHL All-Star Skills Competition as one of the best rookies in the league at the time. Unfortunately though, Hodgson's tenure in British Columbia was about to come to an abrupt end. Minutes before the 2012 trade deadline on February 27th, it was announced that Vancouver had traded Hodgson, along with defenseman Alexander Solza, to the Buffalo Sabres, in exchange for forward Zach Cassian and defenseman Marc-Andre Gragnani. Having left the only NHL organisation he had ever known, the former first round pick welcomed the change of scenery and the chance to play a bigger role with his new organisation, as Hodgson spent the rest of the year on Buffalo's roster. 
Though he would struggle to put up points early on, the rookie forward finished the year by scoring three goals and eight points in 20 games with the Sabres, bringing his full season totals to 19 goals and 41 points in 83 games. As if his rookie season couldn't get any better, this performance also marked the first time that Hodgson had played a full season of hockey without any injuries since his draft year back in 2008. Luckily for both the player and the organisation, Hodgson's tenure in Buffalo would prove to be pretty successful over the next few years. After the 2012 lockout forced Hodgson to begin the year in the AHL, where he put up 19 points in 19 games with the Rochester Americans, the Canadian forward would rejoin the Sabres roster once the lockout had come to an end, and look to take his game to the next level. In fact, the 23-year-old would produce one of, if not the best season of his entire NHL career, as he potted 15 goals and 34 points in just 48 regular season games during his sophomore year in the league, finishing second on the team in scoring, only behind longtime Sabres forward Thomas Vanek. This impressive play was also deemed good enough for the Sabres to go all in on their new rising star, as on September 11th, 2013, Buffalo signed Hodgson to a whopping six-year, $25.5 million contract worth an average annual value of $4.25 million a season. So, was this the right move to make? Would it work out for both the player and the organisation in the long run? Though it seemed like it might do early on, it quickly became clear that it really, really wouldn't. The 13-14 season saw Hodgson's scoring pace struggle to keep up with his half-season numbers the year prior, but he ended up producing the highest scoring season of his NHL career. Despite adding a hand injury to his ever-growing list of ailments, the former first-round pick finished the year as the Sabres' highest scorer, thanks to posting 20 goals and 44 points in 72 games. That said, he also recorded a plus-minus of minus 26, so there's always a yin to the yang, you know. Unfortunately, the following 14-15 NHL season would see Hodgson's production practically jump headfirst off a cliff. Though he would suit up in six more games than the year prior, the Canadian forward would score a measly six goals and 13 points in 78 regular season games, his worst single season production since he entered the league full time four years ago. Though they had only committed to paying him over $4 million a season just two years ago, this huge decline in such a short period of time prompted the Sabres to make some changes. In a surprise twist, on June 30th, 2015, it was revealed that Buffalo had bought out the final four years of Hodgson's contract, thus immediately making him an unrestricted free agent. This might seem like quite the bump in the road at first glance, but this action guaranteed that Hodgson would receive a little under $800,000 a year every single year until 2023. Every cloud has a silver lining, folks. Despite his unceremonious exit from Buffalo and his underwhelming production the season prior, there were several NHL teams that were still interested in adding the 25-year-old to their roster. In fact, Hodgson found a new home on the first day of free agency on July 1st, 2015, as he signed a one-year, $1 million contract with the Nashville Predators. Having returned to the league's Western Conference for the first time since 2012, Hodgson was hoping that his fresh start in a new city and his short-term prove-it contract would motivate him to regain his performance from just a few years prior and get his career back on track. Unfortunately though, this wasn't meant to be. Hodgson would begin the 15-16 NHL season on the Predators roster, but he would find himself much lower on the depth chart compared to his time in Buffalo, as he spent much of his tenure as the team's fourth-line centre. Though it was hoped that he would regain his scoring touch from seasons past, both the player and his new organisation would be left bitterly disappointed, as Hodgson scored just eight points in the first 39 games of the season. Having produced lacklustre results midway through the year, and with several prospects biting at his heels to take his spot, on January 13th, 2016, the Predators announced that they had placed Hodgson on waivers. Having gone unclaimed by another team in the league, Hodgson cleared waivers the next day and was reassigned to Nashville's AHL affiliate, the Milwaukee Admirals. 
In fact, the Canadian Ford would go on to spend the rest of the year in the minors, and though it clearly wasn't the ideal situation for him, the 26-year-old ended the season on a high note by notching 11 points in 14 games with the Admirals. Once the season was over, and having lost his place on their NHL roster, Nashville announced that they would not be extending Hodgson's contract for the upcoming season, thus immediately making him an unrestricted free agent for the second time in as many years. As the off-season came and went, and with him receiving little to no offers from NHL teams, Hodgson decided to make an unexpected announcement. On October 3rd, 2016, Hodgson declared that he was retiring from playing professional hockey, and he would instead be returning to the Predators organization in order to serve as a coach for their Little Preds Learn to Play program. So at just 27 years of age, Cody Hodgson decided that instead of grinding it out in the minors, trying to work his way back into the bigs on a two-way deal, or take his talents overseas to Europe, he was calling it quits on his career and hanging up his skates for good, just as his prime years were on the horizon. Now, as you might expect, this decision surprised a lot of people within the hockey world, especially given that Hodgson was only three years removed from a 20-goal, 44-point year in the NHL. Some began to wonder whether it was NHL or bust for him at this point in his career, or whether his prior injuries had done more damage to his health than initially expected. However, the Canadian forward had a pretty good reason to justify his decision. Soon after he announced his retirement, it was revealed that Hodgson had been diagnosed with malignant hypothermia, a genetic disorder that is caused by a mutation in the RYR1 gene and can be triggered by prolonged physical activity. In fact, Hodgson's struggles during his last few seasons in the NHL had directly coincided with him being affected by the disorder, as he had experienced shortness of breath, blackouts, muscle tightness and heart arrhythmia, while his body would start shaking for no apparent reason. Things got so bad during his final year in Nashville that Hodgson describes his tenure with the team as a literal struggle. Given the severity of his condition and the fitness needed to play hockey at the professional level, doctors insisted that Hodgson call it quits on his career in order to ensure his long-term health, which ultimately prompted him to retire and shift his focus to coaching instead. So not only had he faced a misdiagnosed injury and a full year of rehab at the start of his NHL career, a rare genetic disorder had rendered his play all but useless and ended his career pretty abruptly too. Wow, he couldn't catch a break, could he folks? This meant that after parts of six seasons in the NHL, Cody Hodgson was hanging up his skates, having scored 64 goals and 142 points in 328 regular season games, as well as a single point in 12 playoff games. Nothing to write home about, of course, but considering what he had faced during his tenure in the league, I think he did pretty well for himself, you know. If you ask me, I think it's a real shame that Hodgson never got the opportunity to show what he was made of or reach his full potential in the NHL. After all, his career began and ended with health problems, and when he started to show glimpses of the player he could become, he was either traded or was playing for a pretty terrible team around him. I mean, you can't exactly shine if you're the team's top point scorer with 44 points over an 82-game season. But anyway... In the years after his retirement, Hodgson has served as a coach for the Predators Junior Hockey Program, has partnered with the RYR1 Foundation, and has even featured in a documentary about his career and his struggle with the disorder. By the looks of it, Hodgson is taking his current situation in stride, and is using his profile as a former pro hockey player to help raise awareness and understanding of the disorder around the world. In the few times he has been interviewed since calling it quits, Hodgson has stated that the decision to hang up his skates was understandably a difficult and upsetting one since it had always been his dream to play in the NHL, but he doesn't long for what might have been. Instead, he feels fortunate to have made it to the bigs for as long as he did and managed to make his dream a reality. It may not have been the journey that anyone was expecting, but Cody Hodgson seems to be taking good care of himself nowadays as he inspires fellow sufferers of his disorder and teaches the next generation of hockey players. And besides, he managed to earn over $13 million during his career and has two more buyout checks coming his way over the next couple of years. So at least he doesn't have to worry about his finances anytime soon, right guys?
And that was a look at the unfortunate career of Cody Hodgson. What do you guys think about Hodgson's struggles or his NHL career as a whole? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolness, Roman from London, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.